Hey, I'm Kez Bracey for Tats Plus, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the top five color management plugins for Figma. I've gone through and evaluated every single plugin that Figma currently has to do with color, and these are the ones I think are going to help you out the most in your work. If you haven't worked with plugins in Figma before, the way that you can install them is by logging into your account and a new dashboard in the sidebar, you'll see this item labeled plugins. And then in the main section of the window, you can browse through all of these different plugins. You can click on a particular plugin to view more information and to install. It's just a one click, click the button here, which will of course say install if you haven't yet installed that particular plugin and everything will be handled for you automatically. Okay, first up we have the UI gradients plugin, which makes it really easy to browse through a library of really nice pre-created gradients and apply them to any item that you have in your design. So I am going to select this rectangle here that I have on my canvas and then I'm going to right click anywhere is fine and I'm going to go to plugins and then I'm going to choose UI gradients. Alternatively, I could come up to the top left menu here and go to plugins and then choose UI gradients from here. Both menu access points are exactly the same. It just depends on what's convenient for you at any given moment. So it's going to load up a bunch of gradients for us. We can browse through and then we can just choose any one that we like by clicking on it and it will be automatically applied to the item. So we can do this as many times as we like very quickly and easily applying gradients to any part of your design. The second color plugin that we're going to look at is image palette, which will let you generate a color palette from any image that you select. As a side note, I'm also going to show you the Unsplash plugin, which is a great way to find beautiful images and get them into your canvas. So I'm going to start by right clicking and opening up the Unsplash plugin. Now, if you haven't used Unsplash before, it's an excellent source of completely free photographs that you can use for commercial or personal purposes. I'm going to go into search and I'm going to find a nice nature image. I like this one. I'm going to click it and that will be inserted into my layout. There it is there. And now to use image palette, I'm just going to select the image, right clicking it, go to plugins, image palette, and you can see that with no extra steps, it has automatically generated this palette of colors here drawn from this image. So let's have a look at another couple of quick examples. Let me grab another image from Unsplash. I'm going to go to search again and choose an animal image this time. And I'm going to go with this beautiful fox. So the same thing again. I'm just going to right click, go to plugins and hit image palette. And then bam, there is another color palette for us. And just one more for good measure. I'm going to search again, go to nature once more. And this time I'm going to add this image. And then just like so far, image palette, and there's our palette of colors to work with. Now, there are a few other Figma plugins that will extract colors from images for you. So of course, go ahead and try any of those plugins that you like. You might prefer one over this one, but for me, image palette is fantastic. Next up, we have Color Designer, which is an excellent plugin that allows you to start with a base color and then generate a collection of tints, shades, and colors to go along with your original color according to various types of color theory. So right now on this page, I have a rectangle and inside the frame that's containing it, I've got a little shape that I want to turn into a lit surface on the corner of this shape and another shape that I want to turn into a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'll start with the light and I'm going to right click and once again, go into plugins and this time we're using color designer. Let's just move this out of the way. So now I have a whole bunch of automatically generated tints. So tints are a version of your color with more white added in, so they look lighter. So I'm going to choose one of these tint colors. I'm just going to click this one. That gives me a color code that I can use, which I can then paste into the fill. Actually, let's make sure I've got the correct shape selected. Which I can then paste into this fill here. And now we have a highlight color. I can do the same thing on the shadow. And this time I'm going to go into the shades section. Shades are your original color with black added in, so they look darker. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to choose one of these shades. We'll go with this one here. Copy the color, paste it in, 
and now we have our light and shadow over the top of our original color. Now the other thing that we can do is go into the color harmony section to help us generate color schemes based on different types of color harmonies according to color theory. So here we have complementary colors. Complementary colors are basically directly opposite one another on a color wheel. You have analogous colors, which are right next to each other. They're very similar. You have split complementary, which is almost like complementary, but you end up with two colors that are opposite your original that are slightly different from one another. You have triad where your color wheel is just split into three equal parts. You have a square where the color wheel is split into four equal parts. And you have rectangle, which is similar to square, but not perfectly symmetrical. So it's sort of a blend of square and complementary. So I can then choose my second shape down here and pick any one of these colors that have just been generated to go along with it. So I'm going to choose one from split complementary. I'm going to copy that color and apply it to my shape here. And now that I have another shape, what I can do from here is click load selection. And now I can go through that same process with my new color generating tints, shades, and color harmonies. So this tool is gonna to be a massive help in speeding up your color palette generation processes and giving them a really solid basis in color theory. Next up, we have the color contrast checker. It's really important for accessibility to ensure that you have adequate color contrast between your foreground and your background colors for two reasons. One, so that you make sure that somebody with any form of visual impairment has full access to your content just the same as anybody else. And two, because if you make sure that your content is accessible for somebody with visual impairment, then that means it's also going to be easier for everybody else to read as well. So it's win-win. Now I've copied over one of the color schemes that we generated with image palette earlier, and I'm going to use color contrast checker to make sure that I pair these colors properly. Now I'm gonna start with a pairing that's obviously wrong. So you can see how this color contrast checker works when there's a problem with your current selection of colors. So I'm gonna choose this frame here and I'm going to set the background of this frame here, which is currently just black. I'm gonna sample this color here. And then for the text, I'm gonna sample a color that is too close to it, this one. So you can already sort of see that this is not a good pairing. There's not enough contrast between these two. So let's see what color contrast checker has to say about it. I'm gonna select this frame, go into my plugins and bring up color contrast checker. Now I'm gonna press this check button and you can see that it has evaluated the contrast between my text and my background. And there are two possible passing scores for how adequate your color contrast is you can either get double A, which is mostly okay, and triple A, which is completely okay. And you can use these sliders on this plugin to adjust your current colors and bring them up to a proper level of contrast. So I can make the text lighter. And you can see now I've got my first green check mark for this is mostly okay. And I can also bring my background darker. And now you can see that we have a complete passing grade on our color contrast. So that's not really the kind of colors that we actually want. They might contrast well enough, but they don't really suit what we're going for. So now I'm going to do another selection of colors from here. This time we'll choose this color for the background and I'm gonna choose a lighter color for the foreground and we'll check again. Going into color contrast checker. And there we go, triple A, amazing. So now that is all good to go using the colors that we just generated from image palette. Our fifth excellent color management plugin for Figma is called Colorblind, and it helps you to check and make sure that the colors that you're using still work for people who see colors differently, i.e. people with various forms of colorblindness. What you can do is select a frame and then bring up the colorblind plugin. And these are all different types of colorblindness that it can emulate for you. So I'm gonna leave them all selected. And for every one of those checkboxes, it's gonna generate a duplicate of the frame that I currently have selected. So let's see that happen. All right, so there we go. Now we've got a different frame. 
for every different type of color blindness so you can see for yourself how your design is going to look to people with all different types of perception of color. So you can go through and you can check on all of those and make sure that your design is still in good form and if it looks wrong in any one of those emulated versions, then you can tweak your color scheme, regenerate the emulated versions and improve it until everything looks good. So that's our top five color management plugins for Figma. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.